Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. I'm going to have a little fun with this review, because we're going to cover Aerosmith's Nine Lives, but I'm going to cover the two singles that came out with it as well, because I want to discuss the B-sides that are on them. Now, before I get into anything related to the music on this album... This album is amazing, it is special, it is unique. It is the reason why when Guitar Hero Aerosmith came out, I did not for a second question it. Because what many people do not know is this album was the predecessor to Guitar Hero. You could use a keyboard to tap out and play Guitar Hero to the beat. It wasn't as complicated because, you know, you didn't get the fingerings going in there and stuff like that. But it worked off of the beat. I um, There was even a link that used to take you to the website where you could purchase drumsticks to do it and go with it and whatnot. This is, and all you had to do was pop this music album into your computer. I have not tried to run it on any newer computers. Uh, this is back when Windows 94. Five is what I want to call it. Yeah. Was all the rage. Maybe it's Windows. What year was this? Maybe it was, was it Windows 95? Yeah, this was in 97. This album came out in 97, so it's probably Windows 95. Um, and the four of the songs on here you could play on there. I don't remember what the four songs were. I know uh, at least one of the singles, one or two of the singles, and then we'll, something after that. I don't remember. Uh, this album, though, this was the first album Aerosmith did after leaving Geffen Records and going back to Columbia. And... This album was infinitely better than anything they did when they were with Geffen. This album made me honestly love Aerosmith again. Uh, because, you know, I've already reviewed Permanent Vacation. I've already reviewed Pump. One day, maybe, maybe I'll get to get a grip. Maybe. Big, big maybe. But... By the time Get a Grip had come out and been released, I was done with Aerosmith. <laughs> and then this one came out and I gave them one more try and I loved it. Forget the video game, okay? So I mentioned the video game. The video game was awesome. And this is why I still have my original beat-up copy because this sucker's got the video game on it. So, this was a piece of work. And the music on it was just killer. So let's get into the music, all right? We got, the album opens up with Nine Lives. Nine Lives is one of the most stock songs on this album, one of the most boring songs on this album, but it is one hell of a killer way to start off this album, man. I mean, it gets it up and rocking at full tilt. It is the perfect song to throw at the beginning of the album because it's not a bad tune. I think it's, one, of, like I said, one of the most stock songs on this album, but because of how upbeat it is and how fast and boom out there it is, it fires up the album on all four, or on all cylinders. You know, uh, you got everything going full tilt ahead. And then when it's over and you move on to the next song, it's okay, you don't mind. But it never, no matter what, when you start out this album, man, it starts it up perfectly. From there, we go to Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so first off, this was the first song single to come out from there and man that was a fun video such a fun video and i love this song i still love this song i mean the amount of sexuality that drips out of this whole entire album it is insane i mean they put a shaved pussycat they put a shaved pussycat on the front of the album Surrounded by a bunch of snakes. Okay? You don't need to have any type of psychology degree or anything like that to see the symbolism going on here. Okay? Fantastic. 
s song though. Uh, Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees. Once again, the album started off really good, and now you just got this great vibe going. A uh, little experimental, not your basic Aerosmith. I mean, some people might argue it was a little bit stock. And parts of it are, definitely. But they play with it. They give it a little vibe. Something a little bit different. Um, after that, we go into Hole in My Soul. Now, normally I rip on the Aerosmith ballads. But Hole in My Soul... Out of all the songs they did in the 90s, all the ballads they did, Hole in My Soul, to me, belongs up there with... I guess they get one off of every album that, you know, I can understand I can go with. Because, you know, you've got Angel on Permanent Vacation. Now, Angel on Permanent Vacation, that's pretty ballad -y stuff that I really just know. And then, you know, we're not going to call Janie's Got a Gun a ballad, really. But we will say that um, what it takes definitely would be more ballad-esque. Hole in My Soul kind of falls somewhere in between Janie's Got a Gun and what it takes, I want to say. But the music better. <laughs> the music is so much better. Um, well, not that Janie's Got a Gun, but better than what it takes, I think. And I like the kind of storytelling behind it, you know. Once again, Aerosmith does something a little different on this album. Then you got Taste of India. All right. So you can see the Indian influence in here already. And I really dig Taste of India. I really like what they do with it. I love that they give it kind of that Indian vibe. And, you know, that's one thing with Aerosmith is, you know, sometimes they kind of show up late to the party for certain things they like to do. You know, like the whole India, including sitar, Indian aesthetics into rock and roll, you know, 97. So they were only like 30 years behind on that one. <laughs> but they missed it the first time around and they tried to go with it and capture it the second time around. And I love Taste of India. I think it is wonderful. I really like what they do with it. I really like the sound of it. And it's a great song to listen to. Then we get to Full Circle. Um, Full Circle is a good tune. It really is. But it's a little forgettable. Uh, compared to like all the other songs that are on this album, it might be a little more forgettable than Nine Lives even is, you know? Because it, it doesn't have that full get up there and go like Nine Lives did. Uh, something's Gotta Give. Another tune. Totally dig it when this album's playing, man. I love putting it on when this album's playing and listening to it. And I think it is a great tune. But once again, doesn't doesn't pop on its own, really. You know, it's a good album cut. Ain't That a Bitch. My only complaint about Ain't That a Bitch is it's a little bit too much vibey, like, hole in my soul. Um, and most likely that has to do with the fact that it's, you know, Steven Tyler, Joe Perry, and Desmond Child as the writers on both songs. Uh, so, you know, I think it captures a little bit uh, of that same vibe and essence between the two, but Ain't That a Bitch is still really good. Still really good, too. After that, we get to The Farm. I like The Farm. I really like The Farm. Uh, this is where the album for me really, really, really starts to pick back up again. And uh, really gets going and really has kind of a fun vibe to it. And I like it more so as the lead into the next song, which is Crash. Like, you got the farm, which has got to get this great kind of build up into it. And then you get hit Crash. And Crash is like this full tilt energy explosion coming at you, on, firing on all cylinders. And, you know, you just, you can feel that that crash is coming at the end, man. Um, 
both tracks really great songs uh i enjoy the farm and crash both on their own they have both been in individual mixes of mine over the years then we get to kiss your past goodbye um good tune i honestly i don't mind it and it's it's definitely a cliche kind of leftover song again it feels like from you know the earlier albums uh obviously different albums so you know it's not one that was ever recorded or produced or re- you know shown to geffen i'm assuming after that we go into pink oh okay pink pink is such a such a horrible song but so good oh pink is definitely a guilty pleasure kind of song man because it is it's is not a fantastic song by any stretch of the imagination. It is just a giant innuendo song the whole way around. Uh, I enjoy Pink. I think it's a great song. But it's definitely not for everybody because it, it's kind of like, yeah, it's one of those songs that, you know, great at the time, maybe hasn't aged as well. Or maybe it's aged even better. Maybe that's why I think I like it more now that it's even more wrong than I did back when it came out. <laughs> After that, we go to attitude adjustment. Um, attitude adjustment's not bad. It's another album cut. And then the album finishes with Fallen Angels. Normally. I would really complain about an album finishing with a song like this. As this is a really, this is a very kind of downtrodden kind of song. It it would be like, you know, ending the Pump album with Janie's Got a Gun, you know. Now, musically, this song's definitely a little more stock. This song's more vocals. It really is. And if you're one of my regular viewers, you know how I feel about vocals. I'm not, you know, vocals are great. They're wonderful. But the lyrics are not very important to me. Um, The whole way around. I'm, I'm just going to stop talking about that song there, really. Because Fallen Angel, it's just a good way to end the album. I really enjoyed it. Which is surprising. But this album, the whole way around, it's not a perfect 10 album. But... It is a great album. I really, really enjoy this album every time I listen to it. And I don't ever skip any of the songs on this album when I listen to it. This is a beginning-to-end album. Yeah, there's a few tracks on here that, you know, I wouldn't take them off and put them into mixes. But that's why they're great album tracks, you know. So, that's what I think about the Nine Lives album. It is fantastic. Uh... My biggest complaint, and I complained about this with every other song from the Geffen period, basically, is where the hell are the rest of the band members? Brad Whitford has written some of Aerosmith's best songs. And not here. Not here. Um, It's all about Tyler and Perry now. And it was all about Tyler and Perry basically throughout the whole 90s. I mean, let's face it, and the 80s. Uh, Most of Aerosmith's career has honestly been about the Tyler Perry connection and the Toxic Twins and whatnot. And it is a shame. I don't know the story behind the scenes or whatnot, if any of the guys even bother to submit stuff for this album or whatnot. All I know is they're not here and it really kind of sucks. It does. Uh, but let's move on to the singles. So, Hole in My Soul. Song that I thought was good enough that I actually took the time to pick up the single because I was willing to give the B-side a go. I like the A-side enough that, you know, okay, sure. I'll pay a few bucks, pick up the A-side, and get the B-side. And the B-side is Falling Off, a bonus non-album track. All right. um, Good tune. Uh, I enjoy it. I I see why it was left off of the album. 
It is not a song that was meant to be on the album. I don't think it was... It was meant to, it was meant to be a B-side, uh, a good B-side, a very good B-side, but it doesn't fit with the theme of the album. It doesn't fit with the vibe of the album. It wouldn't have worked on the album, I don't think. There's no song on the album I would have taken off to put this one on. It just, not the right vibe. And then we go, and uh, if I remember correctly as well, uh, I believe this was a Joe Perry song. Uh, Joe Perry does the vocals on it, or is the lead vocalist on it. And um, really kind of cool. Joe Perry doesn't get to sing on albums. It's always on a B-side. It's always on a, a bonus track, stuff like that. Because Joe Perry has a very kind of boring voice compared to Steven Tyler. It's not a standout kind of voice. He's got a cool voice, and he sounds great when he's doing bluesy tunes and stuff like that. But it's not a standout voice. It's not going to pop. It's not going to make for great singles. But it does make for cool B-sides. And then on the Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees sing single, the B-side is Fall Together. Yet again, a bonus non-album track. Uh, Fall Together also would not fit properly on the album, which is what makes it a great B-side. Uh, Falling Together, I do not like it as much as Falling Off. I think Falling Off is a far better song and the superior of the two. But Falling Together is very enjoyable. Uh, I really get into it. I really dig it. If you honestly come across either of these singles, they're worth picking up. Um, if you can get them for the right price. There's nothing fancy or special about them, you know. Uh, I'll take this out here. You know, that's what the CD looks like. Doesn't come with a booklet. I bought these brand new. They didn't come with anything special inside them. The other one is just actually even more basic. Uh, if, if I took the time to cut it open, there is a cool picture inside there. But I'm not going to cut that open so you can see the cool picture. There is no picture inside the other one. The artwork for this album is awesome. It really is. I really dig the artwork for this album. I would pull the artwork out of here, but I, I don't remember if there's any... Oh, you know what? Let's do it. What do you say? It's worth looking at, because they really did... This is when they... You know, they were still taking time to do album artwork, you know? And, and it's a shame that that's not a thing as much anymore. It's really cool. I really like that one. And, and then the other cool part of this... I'm going to have to use my thumbs here. I'm not sure how... What I like is each picture kind of disappears into the next picture. And I had to hold that funny because there there's some animated breasts. And, you know, I don't know if we're going to have to worry about that or not. You know, it's straight up animated breasts, not innuendo. You know, and that that's it going into the next picture. Uh, to give you an example... The the picture that you see there, that red uh, that red painted on bikini, yeah, that, that's that's a red painted on bikini. It's not in the original artwork. <laughs> the original artwork's in here. And then you see it, you know, it just kind of keeps going. These things keep wanting to jump out of where I'm storing them here. <laughs> now I've had this for a while, so unfortunately, over the years, it's gotten beat up a little bit. Yeah, I just showed you that one, right? Yeah. Kind of fixing the pages a little bit as I go. Goes into that one. Which leads into this whole cool little comic strip there. That's kind of nifty. Which goes into that.
which goes into that. Which goes into that. Which goes into that. <laughs> Which then goes into that. So, you know, yeah. It's really, uh... It's really good fun time. Really good fun time. If you have never picked up the Nine Lives album, I think this is a must for Aerosmith fans. I think all Aerosmith fans should have this, whether you knew Aerosmith or old Aerosmith. I think this is the best example of a top quality, top shelf Aerosmith album outside of the 70s. Uh, there is only one other Aerosmith album outside of the 70s. I enjoy this one as much as this one, which I have yet to cover, I believe, which is the Honking on Bobo album. We'll get to it eventually. Anyways, folks, uh, that's been a lot of Aerosmith. That'll be the end of Aerosmith for a while. I uh, don't have too much left to cover. Anyways. Great album. Fun singles. If you can find them, pick them up. If you're an Aerosmith fan, worth having them in the collection. Those are my thoughts. Those are my views. Comment section. That's for your thoughts and views. Uh, let me know what you think. Otherwise, uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. That helps out both of us. And peace. Love, take care.